Hi everyone, this is Dr. Masood Yusuf. The topic that we will cover in this video lecture is Variation Method and Variation Theorem. Prior to this topic, we will cover what are approximate methods and why do we need such methods. We will also discuss about a specific uh, problem with the multi-electron systems where we need to find and apply approximate methods. Finally, we will introduce variation method under which we, under which we will cover variation theorem and linear variation principle. We will also provide proof, proof of variation theorem and lastly reference and study material will be furnished students can go through these materials in order to develop sound understanding on the aforementioned topics let's begin the topic first of all we will we have to know what are approximate methods Approximate methods mean analytical procedure for developing solutions in the form of functions that are close in some sense to the exact solution but usually unknown solution of the nonlinear problems. Why do we need approximate methods? If we talk particularly about the physics, we can say that because, because Schrodinger equation for an atom or molecule which contains more than one electron cannot be solved exactly, that means in principle one can solve Schrodinger equation exactly only for the hydrogen atom. So approximate methods are needed to solve Schrodinger equation for multi-electron systems. What is the problem with multi-electron systems and why do we need approximate methods in order to tackle or in order to solve multi-electron systems? For multi-electron systems, the major problem arise from the presence of the inter-electronic repulsion terms and this term creates problem in the solution therefore in order to solve Schrodinger equation for a chemical system which is multi-electron which is multi-electron system one use approximate methods In density functional theory, we have some approximations that are employed uh, to, to calculate the exchange and correlation energy. So the problem with the multi-electron system uh, is that we cannot uh, calculate exchange and correlation energy exactly. So in order to solve it, in density functional theory, we have two famous approximations. One is local density approximation and the other one is generalized gradient approximation, also known as GGA. The electron density is varying slowly and hence the inhomogeneous density of a solid or molecule can be calculated using the homogeneous electron gas. So for, for systems that have homogeneous electron density we use local density approximation and exchange and correlation energy can be calculated using this relation. But the problem with LDA has problems 
for example for materials with strongly localized and correlated electrons such as oxides of transition metal and rare earth elements and compounds where we do not have homogeneous electron density so we use generalized gradient approximation so in generalized gradient approximation the use of electron density gradient along with the constant density improves the result of LDA mainly two types of approximate methods are are used one is variation method and the another one is perturbation method this video lecture will cover variation method variation method is based on variation theorem so in order to understand variation theorem one need to understand variation theorem theories of chemical bonding namely molecular orbital theory and valence band theory come from the application of variation theorem to the electronic structure of molecules so this is the importance of the variation method which is based on variation theorem what is variation theorem the variation theorem states that the expectation value of the energy of any wave function is equal to or greater than the ground state energy so if we choose any wave function of the system it should be either equal or greater than the the energy associated with that wave function should be equal or greater than the ground state energy of the system so ground state energy is the minimum possible energy of the quantum mechanical system so this is the statement of the variation theorem suppose there is a quantum mechanical system for which schrodinger equation cannot be exactly solved the corresponding schrodinger equation can be given by this relation h psi n equal to e n psi n where h is the hamiltonian operator and e is the energy eigen value the exact wave function of this system for ground state is psi not while corresponding energy is e not so for this system which has the this corresponding uh, schrodinger equation at psi n e n psi n we have the ground state uh, energy e not belonging to the wave function psi not so this supposed system has the ground state energy let's suppose it's psi not and energy associated with this uh, ground state wave function is e not suppose we guess the ground state wave function or what we call as a trial wave function or as or as a approximate wave function so we select a trial wave function so we have uh, guessed this wave function let's say it's psi a so this guessing is usually based on the physical and chemical properties of the system so both wave function they are not equal the trial wave function is not equal to the ground state wave function of the system the corresponding energy uh, relating to this trial wave function is e a and is given by this uh, relation uh, using expectation value calculation so 
it must be greater than the e naught or it can be equal only if the trial wave function is exactly equal to psi naught also it is already assumed that equation 1 cannot be solved exactly this was the equation 1 and we have assumed that this is not uh, exactly solvable cannot be exactly uh, solved therefore in this case approximate wave function will always give energy greater than the corresponding exact energy and this is the definition of the variation theorem so what is variation theorem that if we select a trial wave function it will always have a energy greater than the ground state energy and it can be equal only if the trial wave function is exactly the ground state wave function closer the psi a is equal to psi naught trial the more closer the trial wave function uh, closer to the ground wave uh, ground state wave function so the energy relating to them their difference will be uh, lesser so e a will be closer to e naught suppose we have two trial wave functions and each one of uh, one of give the approximate energies then that wave function which give energy closer to the exact energy will be better choice will be better wave function than the other so we can choose multiple wave functions and trial wave functions and that trial wave function uh, which provides which gives uh, more closer energy uh, to the ground state will be preferable so how to uh, identify that preferable or preferred wave function we use a, me a method to construct uh, such preferred wave function through linear variation principle this principle helps us in constructing the approximate wave function according to linear variation principle approximate wave function can be written as the linear combination of the set of wave functions psi n so a system can have multiple wave uh, wave functions psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 up to so on and we can uh, construct a wave function trial wave function using those wave function uh, utilizing linear variation principle the trial wave function is expressed as a linear combination of a complete set of normalized and orthogonal eigen wave functions so the trial wave function psi a can be constructed through linear variation principle as you can see where a n are uh, various coefficients let's begin the proof of variation theorem let's see how variation theorem can be proved through the use of linear variation principle if we take the approximate wave function then according to the variation theorem the energy uh, the approximate energy ea can be given by this relation so we have already used this equation you can see and then through linear variation principle we have used psi a is equal to sigma a n psi n so we are putting this value of psi a into this equation so what we have we have this equation 2 as you can see uh, conjugates are here so as we have chosen psi n to be normalized 
So in this case, uh, the condition of normalization that we already know that it yields uh, 1. So what will happen? This psi n, uh, so uh, this uh, at uh, operator, Hamiltonian operator, uh, it can operate on this psi end and it can yield energy uh, eigenvalue and the uh, wave function psi n. So you can see h can operate on this wave function and as a result we have uh, this can operate on this and at psi n will be equal to e n psi n. So e n is constant, it can uh, go this way and psi n star and psi n will be uh, the their uh, integration over the whole space will yield 1 uh, as a condition of normalization. So uh, you can see that we the what we have left is sigma a n a n e a n star uh, e n and we can use uh, a n and a n star as modulus. So this is what we have now. So let's uh, so on both sides of this last equation let's subtract uh, E naught ground state energy. So we have this uh, final relation equation 3. So what we can uh, deduce from this equation 3 E n is greater than E naught. This E n is greater than E naught. Why? As we defined E naught as the lowest energy, we have already talked that the E naught is the ground state, which means it is the minimum energy or the lowest energy. So this is the low lowest, whatever energy E n has, it should be greater than E naught. So we have E n greater than E naught. And this uh, multiplying, uh, multiplying factor A, and modulus uh, square squared modulus it's also greater than zero it's also positive uh, sum of positive real numbers so this makes uh, uh, en minus e not greater than zero so uh, this makes right hand side of the equation so the right hand side is positive the result of equation 3, the right hand side is positive. So left hand side difference must give E A greater than E naught. So if this is the result of the equation 3 is positive, then there is only one choice that E A is greater than E naught. E A is greater than E naught. And this is the statement of variation theorem whenever trial wave function is used then corresponding energy calculated using variation theorem will be greater than the corresponding exact ground state energy. So this is how we uh, have proved the variation theorem. So these are the recommended books. Uh, students can go through these uh, uh, books in order to develop uh, sound understanding. So thank you for having me. That's all.